let's talk about the the role that fructose sodium play on hypertension through the lens of uric acid, vasopressin, fluid retention, whatever the effectors are. So blood pressure, you know, we, I've been, I've had a very a long standing interest in in the mechanisms driving high blood pressure, and um, and what we what, the way we kind of tracked it back, and I'm going to kind of track it back in the way that we dis, our work uh, kind of uncovered it. The first issue was that you know it's known that um, salt is important in blood pressure, and um, and that animals that are sensitive to high blood pressure, are, you can make blood pressure a lot worse by giving them salt. And studies you know, from 1900 showed that if you took people with high blood pressure and you put them on a salt restriction that you can lower blood pressure. So it's been known for a long time that salt is very important in blood pressure. And um, this has led to restrict, you know, recommendations to restrict salt in people with high blood pressure. Um, not everybody is sensitive to salt. And um, a lot of people when they're young can eat all the salt they want um, and, and they don't seem to have as so much of a problem. But uh, as we get older, we become more and more sensitive to the effects of salt and blood pressure. And you can show that as we get older, um, that, that when you give salt, blood pressure rises, uh, tends to rise more. So the question is, you know, why is that? And for years it was thought that the problem is that the kidneys in people with high blood pressure can't excrete salt as easily or as well as normal people. And so that there was some defect in the kidney that could cause that. To make a long story short, we're, uh, we spent you know, over a decade studying this and we discovered that people with high blood pressure have um, inflammation in their kidneys. They have low grade inflammation in their kidneys and it's due to uh, T cells and macrophages and they tend to be in the, uh, in the um, main part of the kidney where we call the tubules and where, where the tubules are and, uh, and around the little blood vessels. And uh, we were able to prove that the inflammation was actually maintaining the kidney in a, in a state where it couldn't get rid of salt very well. And it did this be, by basically creating uh, a reduced blood flow to the kidney. So in people with high blood pressure, they all have reduced blood flow to their kidney. When you reduce the blood flow, you, you, you uh, affect the ability of the kidney to excrete salt and you start to retain salt. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.